Hello everyone around the world. So today we are going to use a tectonic scope to debugging the DDR2 memory bus. So the scope we are using is DSA70000 digital series analyzer. So there is um, the DDR3 and a whole bunch of software integrated into the scope. It can analyze the different SB bus. The bandwidth of this guy is um, 12.5 gigahertz with 50 gig sample per second sample ring. The probe I'm using is uh, 5 GHz differential probe. So let's take a look at the device under test. So let's take, turn on the, the lamp so that we can take a close look at the current setup. This board, uh, we can see this is the CPU bus. And we have three DDR2 memory channels and the three memory on the board. So first one, second one, and the third one. The probe I'm checking is and connect to the clock signal on the third memory channel. Okay, so if we go back to the scope screen, we will see, okay, let's zoom in this area. We will see the clock frequency is 364 megahertz. Okay, and if we use normal trigger and the, the, the normal scope mode, we will see that this is the signal we capture. Right now I'm going to turn on the Tektronic DPX technology, which means the waveform capture rate will be increased a lot. So that will capture the waveform in really, a lot of waveform in a really short term. So if we turn on this, okay, we will see, there's some, looks, there's some intermediate timing distortion on the signal. Let's zoom in this area more close to the, this area, we will see, okay, on the edge, on the falling edge of the clock, it looks like there's some jitter issue. So we trigger here. Okay, so we try to uh, isolate this problem. So I'm going to use the uh, advanced trigger function. So let's go to the trigger. And I'm going to use uh, glitch trigger to trigger on this kind of timing distortion. So I switch from A trigger to B trigger. And because the frequency it's like 364 megahertz, so the period of one cycle is 2.7 nanosecond. Okay, so the half of the half of the clock period is around uh, 1.35 nanosecond, right? So let's change the the glitch pulse wise. So that means any signal, if the pulse wise is less than this uh, certain kind of range, we will trigger. So we trigger only trigger on the uh, positive pulse wise. Let's decrease this pulse wise a little bit. So we will see right now I'm using 1.4 nanoseconds. So if I continue to decrease this value, oh, finally you will see on the normal DDR signal, there's some intermediate short pulse, positive short pulse. This is the trigger point. We can see this is the pretty, pretty outstanding to show this much narrower than the negative pulse wise. Right? And also there's some the timing distortion jitter on the bus. So when continue to go down, uh, go down. Oh, finally we see a still. If we set the pulse wise like uh, 1.2 for narrow seconds and move close to here, move close to here, we will see oh there's some interference. So this will finally cause the system crash during the real application running. So we because we have this um, the DPX tools, we can easily to identify the problem and then set the advanced trigger to trigger this issue. And so I think this is a pretty good um, example to show how efficient we can use the scope to, to isolate the issue.